All right, so we're going to do some tessellations for this project. So a tessellation is a pattern where you have a shape or shapes. In this case, we're going to do one shape um, that fits together almost like a puzzle perfectly with all the shapes around it. So here's my first shape. This was from my turtle design here, obviously. So this shape you can see fits perfectly right here. And then if I slide it, it perfectly fits right there. So the turtle is like a little puzzle piece, but it fits only with itself, okay? And then, so you can do it as an animal, and I'll show you that way, or you could do it just as a design, and I'll show you this way as well. So this one, you can see this is my little puzzle piece, and I traced it, and it fits perfectly with the shapes all around it. So the this top piece right here fits exactly with this bottom piece right here. So this is called a tessellation again. That's a pattern when you have a shape that fits perfectly with itself over and over repeating um, with no little gaps between it, no spaces. So the first thing we have to do to make our tessellation is make our template, our little tracer. So in this case, I made my turtle one and my random one. So let's start just, I'll show you this random design one just the random um, shape. So the first thing you're gonna need to do no matter which one you're doing is you need to make yourself some two and a half inch squares. Um, if you wanna go a little bigger, you could go a little bigger. Maybe you have um, like a post-it note might work for this, although the sticky part in the back might get in the way, but um, all you're gonna do, if you don't have a square already, the simplest way to do this is get out a ruler and when you um, go to measure your squares, make sure right here, this is where your one inch mark starts, not the edge of the ruler. The edge of the ruler is not zero. The zero mark is right here, okay? So obviously one inch, two inch, three inch, this little line right down the middle right here between the two and the three, that's my two and a half inch mark. So that's where I wanna go for my two and a half inch squares. So I'm going to mark two and a half right here. I should probably be doing this with a pencil. Two and a half inch right here. And then I'm gonna make several squares. So I'm gonna do two and a half, and then I'm gonna do two and a half plus two and a half is five. And two and a half plus five is seven and a half. So I'm gonna make the marks in those three places. And then I'm gonna slide it down I'm going to make those marks again. So two and a half, five, seven and a half. And then I can make the lines coming down like this. One, two, three. And so that's one square, two squares, three squares. Now I just need to find going this way, how big two and a half is. So again, I'm gonna line up to this line right here, not to the edge of the ruler, because that's not two and a half. So I'm gonna go two and a half here, slide it up, measure two and a half up here. Then I can line the ruler up again, go right down like that. Okay, so there are my two and a half inch squares. I can cut those out and you can cut all three out but as you would imagine I, I like to cut out three if you want to do just one you can do just one the only problem with that is if you make a mistake then you have to start all over and get your ruler back out and make a whole bunch more so I like to cut out a few at a time I have like a nice little stack here that I have a whole bunch um, of squares that I can use as my templates just to get a good one that I like so the first thing you're gonna do for your own sanity when you're trying to figure this out, because it's not hard, um, it just, you have to follow the directions kind of carefully, otherwise it won't work. So I'm gonna mark my square, A on top, A on the bottom, and then B on the side, B on the side. And that's because I'm gonna cut out a shape 
from the top and I want to remember that it needs to go to, with the bottom. I'm going to cut out a side, um, a shape from the side and I want to remember that it needs to go with the other side. So A goes with A and B goes with B. So I'm going to show you what that means right now. So the first thing I'm going to do, this is for just the random shape tessellation like this one. It's not for the animal yet. I'll show you the animal in a second. So all I'm going to do is do some kind of shape. I like to go corner to corner just because I think it's easier to line up when we get to the bottom to the next step. You'll see what I mean. I'm just going to snip right there. There. And there. Okay. Now, one thing you absolutely do not, do not, do not want to do is once you cut one piece from each one, do not trim them. If you notice right here, I have a little extra, it's kind of hard to see. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to shut this light out just in case you can't see it. I kind of miss my line right here normally what I would want to do is go back and trim that up a little bit so I get rid of that. Don't do that here. You'll mess up your tessellation. <clears throat> so what you're going to do is you're going to take your top piece that you cut out from the top and you're going to slide it down to match with the bottom. So see now my A and my A are together. I'm going to line them up exactly next to each other like that. I don't want a gap between them. I don't want to tape them like that. I don't want to tape them on top of each other like this. That doesn't help me. I want it exactly right next to each other. Okay? So I'm going to take a little piece of tape here. This is almost the hardest part of the whole project is getting your template nice and even. So the next thing I'm going to do is a shape from this side now. Maybe he'll just do a little, a little triangle like that. What's up, Charlie? Okay. Now this side came from my B and you'll notice that the B, I cut right under the B. So I'm gonna just mark the B back on there just so I don't forget. So now this B side is gonna go zoop, sliding right over to this B side. So now my B side and my B side match up evenly. Sorry. Hold on, bud. So I'm gonna line that up right there. And it doesn't matter where you put it on the side, you could put it up high. Mama. Or you could put it down low. Mama. What's up, bud? Hold on. Okay, so sorry about that. I had to go help Charlie. So now we have our tessellation piece all ready to go. So this is our random shape one. So the next thing I can do is just take my paper and I like to put a piece of scrap paper underneath just in case I go through. You can see I've definitely gone through um, just so I don't go through to my table. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my um, tessellation puzzle piece and you can start this with a pencil if you want. Um, I think I'm gonna go right in with a Sharpie. Let me just make sure I'm, I'm running here. Okay. So I'm gonna do. A, I'm gonna use a pen Sharpie for this, but you can use. Um, you could use a regular pen. You could use a um, just a regular marker. You could do a pencil. Whatever you feel like using. So I like to start by putting it down in the bottom corner and lining right up to the edges. So my the bottom point here is right at the edge and the edges line up over here. You could start right in the middle if you wanted to start right in the middle. I just like how even this looks when you go, when you start at the edge. So all you're gonna do is start by tracing every single edge of your paper, of your tracer. So right around, I'm gonna go around this little triangle and down and up. Okay, so I traced around the whole thing. Now I'm gonna lift it. There's my first piece. Now I'm gonna slide this over, slide it, but I'm gonna have to move it up too. So I gotta find out where this little nook fits right here, and I can start tracing it this way. Or the other way I can go 
is I can take this and I can slide straight up like this and see it fits perfectly. So I can start tracing this one. Go right around and down. Get a kind of bump over there. Okay, so now I can slide up again or I could keep going over if I was going over and I can start tracing this way. Okay, on that side and down. Okay, and there's my next shape. And if you miss a little spot you need to connect, that's fine, it's no big deal. So now let's start going this way just so we can see what it looks like. So I'm gonna go this way and I'm gonna slide to the side, but I'm gonna have to slide this up so it matches up with that last piece. So I'm gonna do some zigzags. This way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, and up, okay? So now you can see my pieces start to fit together and I can slide this one right underneath. And now I have my, the rest of my pieces kind of coming together as well. So that is step one. You're gonna keep going. You can see this one's gonna fit right there. You're gonna keep going until you have the whole thing filled up like this. So you can see I have this shape, I repeated it over and over and over and over. And I made sure I got the edges too because right on the edges you have to make sure you get those as well, okay? Then with this one, what I did was I took a regular Sharpie, which is here somewhere. I have too many art supplies all over the place here. So a regular Sharpie. And I decided with this one to do kind of a checkerboard pattern. So um, black and white stripes, black and white stripes, black and white stripes. And in between, I did this kind of gradation with colored pencils. Um, so all I'm gonna do is take my black Sharpie and draw some straight up and down lines to fill in every other kind of like a checkerboard pattern every other shape of my tessellation and then since the edges kind of looked messy with this i just went back and trimmed them up just kind of made them a little bit neater by going like this just taking that edge and just kind of connecting all those little dots making sure it kind of covered all the edges that didn't look so good. And then with my colored pencil, I just, to add the color, you could do patterns, you could do um, designs on this, you could do um, stripes or polka dots, whatever you feel like doing. Um, but I decided on mine to do this kind of value effect. So I start dark in the corner on the side and then I go very light over here. Um, and I'll just show you, this is, a, this is a great technique to practice. It gives you great control over your pencil. So you wanna press down hard over here. And then as you go across, you wanna start to get lighter and you have to start pressing down lighter with your pencil and lighter and lighter until you're almost close to white, just close to like regular paper showing through at the very edge over here. And I like to just go back and forth very softly in different directions with my colored pencil just to kind of blend it and make it look nice and even so I have different values of, um, of the same color. Okay, so there is my pattern, okay? So if you want to do the random shape tessellation, that's that one. I'm going to pause this and I'm going to start a new video if you want to do the animation.